All right, guys, we're going to quickly go over a couple of problems from the DCP this past week. These are some um, common errors that we saw you guys make, so we're going to review those uh, quickly in this week's homework. All right, so our first problem says solve 3 fourths times 5 fifteenths. So I know the rule for this is top times top and bottom times bottom. I know this because there is a multiplication symbol in between my two fractions, okay? multiplication symbol in between my two fractions. So I know the rule is top times top, bottom times bottom. All right, so three times five is 15 and four times 15 is 60. So my fraction is 15 over 60. When I look at my answer choices, none of them match. Okay, that doesn't mean that this is wrong. It means that it needs to be simplified or reduced, okay? And so we can do that in two ways. We can use the two, three, five method, or we can butterfly each answer choice, okay? Um, just really quickly before I butterfly, I'm gonna eliminate some obviously wrong answers. So the first one I'm gonna eliminate is answer C. And the reason I'm gonna eliminate answer C is because I got 15 over 60. So this, this top number is the same, 15 to 15, but the bottom number is different. You can't have one number stay the same and one number change. So C is an obviously wrong answer, all right? And then the second obviously wrong answer that I'm gonna eliminate is answer choice D. And the reason that I'm gonna eliminate answer choice D is because it has a whole number, okay? The whole number one in front, there is no whole number in my answer, okay? There's no whole number, there's just a fractional piece. So because there's no whole number, I know that D is definitely wrong, okay? And I would know there's no whole number because my cowboy, the top number, the numerator, is smaller than my horse or my denominator, okay? When the cowboy is smaller, there will definitely not be a whole number in my answer, okay? So I have quickly eliminated these two and now I have two options for A and B. So remember, the easiest and quickest way is just to set them next to one another and to butterfly. So when we butterfly, we multiply corner to corner. So 60 times three is 180 and 15 times 15 is 225, I believe, 225. So 180 and 225 do not equal each other. Therefore, A is not a right answer. So B is probably my right answer, but I am gonna mathematically prove it by butterflying. So 15 times four is 60 and 60 times one is 60. Those are equal, therefore B is the best answer here. Okay, again, you could also use the two, three, five method. I can come up here and show you 15 over 60. We're gonna start by taking out a two. We can't take out a two out of 15. So I'm gonna move on to a three. I can take out a three. Okay, so 15 divided by three ends up being five and 60 divided by three ends up being 20. I go back to my two, three, five method and I go through all three. Do I, can I take out a two? Well, I still can't take a two out of a five, so I'm gonna move on to a three. Can I take a three out of a five? No, but I can take a five out of both five and 20. So five divided by five is one and 20 divided by five is four. Again, either method works. We both got one fourth either way, but I just wanted to show you this is your two, three, five method. And then this is just butterflying. Remember, make those easy eliminations because they are not worth our time. All right, guys. So um, that is how we multiply fractions and how we simplify or reduce, okay? Before we move on to the um, Ms. Kep's question down here at the bottom, I wanna quickly talk about images. So if I gave you these images of these four cats and said, what percent of cats are there? Um, a lot of you counted and said, one, two, three, four. Oh, there's 4%, okay? That is not how this works, okay? We don't just count and turn that into a percentage, okay? If I came down here and I said, how many pink cats are there? right? There would be two pink cats, right? Out of how many total cats? Eight. Okay. Remember total always goes on the bottom. So the fractional part of pink cats would be two out of eight. And again, that's not a percent. So we need to cowboy and horse divide to make a percent, make a decimal. So um, eight would go into 20 two times, leaving four, we'll eat another donut. Eight goes into 45 times. So how many pink cats are there? There are 
25%. Y'all, please do not just count and make that into a percent. That is not how it works, okay? This is not elementary school. We don't just count and find our answer, okay? You actually need to do some math. All right, let's move on to the second question. So it says, Miss Cups surveyed 250 students on their favorite candy. What percent of students said Jolly Ranchers were their favorite candy? So the key thing that I'm gonna pull out of here are the words, what percent? Okay, I know that percent is what's missing because those are my answer choices. So I immediately know that percent is going to go over 100. Okay, that's immediate for me, again, because it says the words what percent, and it gives me percents as answers. When your percents are answers, I know I'm going to have percent over 100 equals and then something. Okay, this is called a proportion. The difference between this and up here is that proportions have equal signs in the middle, right, because they're equivalent, whereas this is a multiplication problem, and we use top times top, bottom times bottom. Please do not confuse these two methods, okay? So now let's set up the rest of our proportion. So it says they want Jolly Ranchers as their favorite candy. So when I look at my table, Jolly Ranchers was 80, okay? So I'm gonna label Jolly Ranchers was 80. And then what always goes on the bottom? Well, total. So I look at my question and I can see, oh, there were 250 total students surveyed. So that's gonna be my bottom number, my denominator, okay? And um, don't forget that you can quickly use some zeros, right? Some zero method to um, reduce this, okay? So don't forget about that, so we'll show you that. So now that we have our proportions set up, um, we can kind of go through and quickly eliminate any obviously wrong answers. So when I'm looking at this problem, um, there were 80 Jolly Ranchers. Just like in the cats problem, is 80 Jolly Ranchers 80%? No. Again, there was no math involved. We need to do math to solve. So 80 Jolly Ranchers is not 80%. So that's an obviously wrong answer. All right, and then we can actually solve our proportion. So when we solve our proportion, we are going to multiply corner to corner. Remember, we leave our unknown outside. So we're multiplying 80 times 100. Um, so 80 times 100 is going to equal 8,000. And then we always divide by our extra number. So we're gonna divide by 250. So you know when I divide, I like to write my division as a fraction first, and then I'm gonna use that easy zeros elimination. So I can see that the top and the bottom number both have one zero at least, so I'm going to cross those off. So now my cowboy is 800 and my horse is 25. So I come down here, I write 800 in the, in the house, put my decimals, and I leave my 25 outside. I need to fill three spaces. 25 does not go into eight, but it goes into 80 three times. Oops, I almost wrote two, three times, which makes 75. And I love 25s because I always think of quarters. Quarters makes it easy for me. So I know three quarters is 75 cents. Um, 80 minus 75 is five, bring down my zero. There are two quarters in 50 cents. And so the percentage of Jolly Ranchers or students that liked Jolly Ranchers was 32%. Okay guys, so make sure that you're using those reasonableness techniques and that you are not just counting, okay? Counting is not how we solve problems in middle school. We have to count and then set up proportions or other problems, okay? So make sure that you're using those strategies. Um, today's magic word is spooky. Have a great day and uh, remember to always count and then use that count for something else, okay? Have a great day.